Lydia from Escape Tours and Safari sent me a text message to be ready at 7 a.m. and a driver would come and pick me up. I eat breakfast and watch the rain as I wait for my driver. Today I am going to Jinja, east of Kampala, which is a town built on the edge of Lake Victoria and the beginning of the River Nile and is also known as the source of the Nile. So we are on Kampala Road going to Jinja. Jinja. The roads this morning are empty because it's Easter Sunday. Yes, please. We leave Kampala and get on the highway for Jinja, which is about 60 miles east. Yeah. So tell, tell me your name. Uh, my name is Dauda Seboa. Pleasure to meet you. It's not to Nairobi. No, this is the Monday, that's not the that's not the And that's for the border. Some is a transport on the side of the road. I notice a lot of tankers and heavy trucks on the road. Duauda says they're headed to Kenya, but didn't explain why. Not much to see, as we are still in the lowlands and marsh areas. This is a field of papyrus, which is used for housing material, rope, fences, and fuel. I start seeing what I was expecting to see. Thick, lush, wet forest. It's been raining constantly since we left Kampala, which concerns me as the roads are slippery due to the mud and the driver slows down when it rains really hard. Uganda is 82% Christian and today is Easter and raining very hard, which would explain why we are not seeing a lot of people when driving through the towns. Which dam? The Owen Falls Dam. Owen Falls Dam. Yeah, they don't, uh, they can't stop. We arrive at Jinja and cross the hydroelectric plant called Owen Falls Dam, which was built in 1954 and supplies Uganda and parts of Kenya with electricity. When the dam was built, Egypt and Uganda signed a treaty to ensure adequate water flow for the Nile. My destination is Owen Falls and the Whitewater River Outfitter called Adrift, where I will watch kayakers and rafters paddle down the Nile over Owen Falls and down to Bujagali Falls. An outfitter called the Drift set up base here. They have a bar, restaurant, hostel, and a bungee jumping tower. It's a very nice facility, but it's also very expensive. I walk to the edge of the cliff and look over Owen Falls and climb down the trail to the river's edge where the rafters are preparing their gear. When the dam was built in 1954, they built over a natural dam and falls called Rapan, which naturally regulated Lake Victoria's water levels and the Nile's water flow. As of 2006, electrical generation has been limited due to low rainfall in the highlands, which replenishes the lake. Before you go into these waters, read the CDC's travel advisory and make sure you understand the parasitic risks, especially that of schistosomiasis. Don't be fooled. Schistosomiasis is prevalent in Uganda and highly infectious, infecting up to 50% of the local population and a higher percentage of Adventure River travelers.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're on the phone. Oh, you are on the Nile River now. I'm on the Nile. Yeah. And it's raining. It's raining. It's raining real hard. Yeah. <laughs> the Western people are going to do water rafting. They are. They're on the river. Yes, please. They're going to go four or five kilometers down river. Yes. Now we're going to get the jeep with Daoud. Yeah. And we're going to go to the end point and pick them up. Yes, please. Cut. I am curious as to why they have such a heavy duty 4x4. I think it's a bit overkill. Nonetheless, it is impressive compared to our Toyota Land Cruiser. We leave Owen Falls, get on the road, and drive up to Bujagali Falls. It's a slow drive as a dirt road is very slippery and several times we ended up in the ditch. Thankfully we never got stuck. After watching several cars slide into the ditch, I decide it's best to get out and walk to the falls. Bujigali Falls are sacred to the locals. A 95-year-old witch doctor called Jaja Bujabal lives and oversees the area. Locals call him the spirit because he can walk across the falls when no one else can. During the 1994 Rwanda genocide, Thousands of bodies clogged the falls, and the spirit walked across to dislodge the bodies. The first of the kayakers arrive, maneuver, and angle to run the rapids. They quickly position themselves as spotters and safeties and when a raft overturns, rescue and assist distressed swimmers. The safety raft leads and demonstrates proper technique and survivability of running the rapids to the now nervous, if not scared, tourists. A drift is very professional and situated many spotters and safeties around the waterfalls. These daring and adventurous boys have the proper equipment using helmets and excellent flotation vests as well as being under the constant supervision of spotters and safeties. Dauda, my driver, and I hike up the cliffs a bit to hang out at the local bar. The prices are very reasonable, especially for coffee, tea, and the local beer. We sit down at the table and watch the rafters and relax, but are swarmed by flies which get into our drinks. Towards noon, the last of the rafts are coming down the river to shoot the rapids. So far, all the rafts make it through. This one is the exception. Once the show is over, 
All the Easter Sunday tourists get back on the road and head towards the next attraction in Jinja, the source of the Nile. There isn't a lot of entertainment in the rural areas of Uganda, so when something unusual does happen, the whole village shows up to watch. This is a typical rural Ugandan village. The economic center of the town is on both sides of the road and hosts a marketplace, which would normally be full of people, but for the mud and rain. We arrive at the source of the River Nile Park and drive down a long, steep, and curvy road, all the while praying the tires maintain their traction. So where are we? Um, we are in Jinja, we are in the source of River Nile. It's, al it's almost one and a half hour from Kampala city to Jinja, to the source of River Nile. Yeah. There is a 10 minute boat ride from the river to the lake, which is called the source. Because it was Easter Sunday and it was very busy, and because I was a Mzungu carrying expensive camera equipment, the boat operator wanted 30 US dollars. I politely refused. On the way home, we stop at a truck stop to fuel up. And I decide I want to try what's on the menu as it's popular with the locals. I ordered chips and chicken, slaw, and coke light, which was delicious and a great way to end the day.